Good morning, and let me welcome you to joining us on this, the 2021st Homefront Heroes celebration. As you're probably aware, we're having to do this virtually rather than in person because of the pandemic, but we'll try and make the most of it regardless. As you may remember, the Homefront Heroes is our recognition of the tremendous contribution made by all of the civilians who served during wartime in support of those who were, were in uniform. Unfortunately, this has never previously been acknowledged and we feel that's a great oversight and certainly we must recognize that uh, as those of us who served in the military during wartime are certainly aware that without the support and the backing of the civilian population, we would certainly not prevail. They were responsible for furnishing us not only with all of the war material that we required to conduct the war, but to maintain our morale, to send us care packages, to bury the body bags as they came home, and to keep the home fires burning. This was such a significant part of the conduct of the war, and for it to have been ignored all of these years is really unconscionable. Consequently, we have asked the city of Dallas to join us in a proclamation for this May the 9th declaration of Homefront Heroes Day in Dallas. <laughs> Mayor Eric Johnson has graciously provided us with such a proclamation. And we're very proud to present that uh, to you as evidence that both the city and our councilman, Adam McGaw, are very conscious of our wishing to acknowledge the contribution of the Homefront heroes. Actually, this year, it is falling on Mother's Day, which is quite appropriate because when you stop and think about it, mothers constituted a large proportion of those who were the hometown heroes. The mothers furnished the sons and daughters, as well as the husbands, brothers, and uncles who served in uniform. And they, were made, they made sure when they came out of the homes and went into the factories and provided the tremendous war material supplies that we needed and made sure that, that we were aware that we were in their concerns and prayers and thoughts, even though we were serving uh, our country on the front lines. And you should be aware also that that is even going on today with part of our population. We're not engaged thankfully, in a world war, but we are continuing to be involved in wars where we are required, or some of us are required to serve uh, in the military. So I do welcome you to join in this, joining us today. We're thankful for this day and every day that we have the freedoms that we have and they are due largely to the tremendous support that the hometown, the home front heroes have provided us through the years. As you know, we have days where we commemorate those who served in the military 
and lost their lives on Memorial Day, which will be later this month. Uh, we also have the 4th of July where we celebrate our freedoms. And we have Veterans Day where we commemorate the service of all of those who have served their country in time of need. But never before have we ever actually had a day where we recognized the tremendous and horrendous contribution of the civilian population and how important it was to our prevailing and reaching victory. Thank you so much and may God bless America. It's been an honor for the last three years to celebrate Homefront Heroes Day. This yearly event was spearheaded by Mr. Lucky Luckadoo, who spent time fighting on the front lines during World War II. He saw firsthand how much support from home helped to win the war. Three years ago, the city of Dallas recognized May 9th as, as Homefront Heroes Day. Our quest to help Lucky make this a national holiday is a special one to him and for us. We hope that you will join us in, in, in making it a national holiday. Congratulations to all of our Homefront heroes for our third annual celebration of what I hope to one day be a national holiday. Uh, as the pandemic approached and we uh, began this journey, I took great inspiration from what I learned about the individuals who inspired this proposed holiday and their selflessness and their ability to put their shoulders uh, to the wheel at a time of uh, great uh, national need. I hope a little bit of that spirit existed in our organization and still does during those times. Congratulations to everyone. I would like to join Mayor Johnson in recognition of May 9th as Homefront Heroes Day. I am grateful for our local hero, Lucky Luckadoo, and his inspiration to recognize and honor Americans for supporting the military. I am thankful and indebted for all veterans, including Lucky and my own father, for preserving democracy and freedom through their service in the military. But today we recognize those back at home during wartime who served selflessly on the home front, supporting the military. Service can look very different. It can, it can include small acts as well as heroic ones. And we all have the responsibility to serve in the capacity we are called. To quote Martin Luther King Jr., everybody can be great because everyone can serve. To serve, you only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. To all those who have served as home front heroes with hearts of grace and souls of love, we are grateful for you and recognize you today. When I think about the term hero, think about my dad, think about my, my grandfathers who both served in the military. Think of people that give their lives or dedicate their lives to the service of others. I think of Lucky Luckadoo, an uh, actual hero, uh, 99 years old, celebrating life in an amazing way, served our country, served our community still today is serving our city and he has pulled together the energy and the passion to remember the home front heroes that were serving and allowing our military to serve overseas those that gave every day their love support and encouragement for our military i think it's appropriate to celebrate our home front heroes i'm very encouraged by the work of lucky 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 do and so many others who have this recognition and on may 9th I want to join with all those to celebrate our home front heroes. We want this to be a national holiday. We want everybody to celebrate those that allow our military and our first responders to serve. So please join me, Adam McGew, Deputy Mayor Pro Tem for the City of Dallas, and Lucky Luckadoo, and all those at Presbyterian North Village, and all our friends to celebrate our home front heroes. My name is Lisa Foster. Um, I, a lot of people call me Rosie, Rosie the Riveter. I am inspired by Rosie the Riveter and have been since 2012. And it has been such a joy to learn about the stories of these win, women that, that were so inspirational that they just rolled up their sleeves. 
there's an association that's called the Rosie the Riveter Association, right? Mm -hmm. They have a mission to really make sure you honor all the women, even the ones that have passed on, you honor them in some way. So their association is really about keeping the stories current. And we call the, like myself, I'm a 21st century Rosie in that association. The girls that, um, like for instance, the daughters of, Ro of real Rosies are called Rosebuds. Yeah, it's really fun because I've been lucky to go to, um, I went to Willow Run, I told you, in Ypsilanti, Michigan, and I went to, um, to the Glen L. Martin plant in Baltimore, Maryland, and met the ladies that built the B-26s. I met some ladies that were from here that built the P-51s, uh, which are the Mustangs, the field ones, and then... Um, so I've just met a lot of different ladies. I was lucky to go to these different places with the commemorative air force mm -hmm. in the, you know, on the plane. So I went on the B 24, we flew there to these places and honored the ladies, you know, they saw the plane there and they ran up and they'd sign a piece of the skin of the airplane. It's been the really funnest thing to meet these ladies and ask their stories. And mm -hmm. this is my book. Yeah. The inside are all the signatures of the ladies that I've met. Gosh, I met a lot. I have one for yeah. the lady pilots, too. The yeah. women Air Force service pilots that trained in World War II to fly the planes. Mm -hmm. They trained in Sweetwater, Texas. They've got a museum, and it's about the 1,076 ladies that learned to fly all the planes that Rosie built. Wow. Stories are really fun, and I've got two little books for those, and, you know, travel around to see those ladies. Norman Rockwell. Um, Saturday Evening Post came out in 1943, and it represented the ladies. And then this one, the girls were glamorous, too. This came out in Westinghouse, and about, this was a Westinghouse, I think it was 44. That these ladies, they don't believe they did anything special, you know? They didn't think they were doing anything special or that they had any kind of special. They never imagined they'd be being honored. They've never imagined to be honored this many years. Did you ever, was there ever a care package you received that really stood out to you? Anything you remember that was like the best thing you got while you were in the war? Well, Mail call was one of the most important parts of our, our um, lives because it was so sought after and it took so long to get messages uh, delivered. And I don't know whether you were familiar with that or not, but it was. I've seen some pictures of that, yes. Okay. And uh, those were, were highly censored. And of course, those of us who wrote home, wrote back, uh, had all of our mail censored. And that was one of my jobs, actually, as an operations officer in the squadron to be sure that none of the outgoing mail contained any valuable uh, information. Yes, I remember also um, uh, my family attempted to send me a birthday cake. A cake? <laughs> And <laughs> you cannot imagine what it looked like when it got there because <laughs> it had been so long in transit and uh, it was stale. <laughs> the motivation and the intent was, was certainly duly appreciated, but <laughs> unfortunately it, it wasn't successful. Do you know about how long it would take to get a letter from here to you? A couple of weeks. <laughs> at least, and sometimes it was longer, but it was considerably longer for uh, ground troops because they were on the move. We weren't, and that uh, allowed our mail to be uh, a little more certain, but uh, it still was painfully uh, long and forthcoming, and uh, we <laughs> looked for it uh, eagerly, uh, I had a girlfriend while I was in the service and overseas, and she wrote me almost every day. I had no opportunity to reply that frequently. <laughs> I was busy as a cat on a hot tin roof, 
and flying uh, constantly and also had ground duties. So uh, I, my, my replies were, were few and short between. <laughs> Was it nerve wracking for her or the people at home, like not hearing from you all as often as they would write to you? I can imagine if it were me, I would be worried, like, did something happen? He hasn't written me or did they just know that that it was going to take a while to hear back from you? Uh, it was, I'm sure, terribly uh, traumatic for families and loved ones because the news in the uh, on the radio, and we didn't have TV then, but uh, we did have newspapers, and they would get reports of battles and uh, injuries or, or losses and things of that sort uh, long before we were able to communicate it to them. And, of course, they would be very apprehensive uh, awaiting the outcome of whether or not we as individuals might have uh, uh, sustained uh, uh, injuries or, or actually been killed uh, in, a, in a particular raid. So that was, that was a, 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 a real problem, was the delay in uh, our personal communications as compared with the news communications. Nowadays, Wendy, it's it's uh, entirely different because there's instantaneous reporting by newscasters uh, on the scene who are embedded with the troops, and they are sending back uh, images and and reports uh, from the front lines as it happens. And we used to say during the, the Vietnam War, for example and the Gulf Wars, that um, they used to time their attacks and, and uh, their activities to our uh, <laughs> uh, dinner time and, and uh, prime time uh, television, because TV now is, uh, is, is so uh, accessible. And you can actually be a part of the action, yeah. which is awesome. And it's it's almost too realistic. It's almost too informative. Uh, you know too darn much about what is uh, is actually happening, and uh, you can actually see it uh, up front and personal. Yeah, the censorship you were talking about—that's hard to do when there's people embedded in there and you know along with the troops and going through it all i'm sure that adds a whole another layer of security concerns yes uh that that's a real problem for the for the uh the military uh and and the uh administration because they can't actually control or censor uh what the camera is seeing and it's not unlike what we're experiencing too with these body cameras uh, that the police are wearing uh, when when they make an arrest and and how you know um, <laughs> what took place and how it took place and uh, form your own opinion. Mm -hmm.